Hi guys, welcome back to Tierra Latrice. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Um, we are about to talk about my home birth. So if you're interested in finding out more of the details, keep watching. All right guys, so I'm so excited to finally be, like to finally come and talk about my home birth. Um, if you have been following me, you know that um, like my past birth history was somewhat complicated. So my first, I have three children now. So my first child, um, I had a C-section with. My second child, I had a hospital VBAC. And then my third, I was able to have the home birth. So, um, this little guy, I have him in my arms. <laughs> this little guy, he was due December 7th. And um, traditionally, none of my babies come on time. My first daughter, Mackenzie, she was two weeks late and I had to be induced. And then my second child, Ami, she was one week late and I kind of pushed her because um, <laughs> she was born the day after Christmas. Um, and then, so with his, um, when his, due date came along i kind of figured i was like i wasn't having any symptoms um any signs of labor or anything so i was like okay god he's gonna be late and i had gotten really big so my midwife um she literally like lived right around the corner so i would go to her house for all of my doctor for all of my appointments so i went to um her on my 40th week and this was the first time that I had ever been checked. She had checked me. Um, I was my uterus was still facing posterior, and I was only about one centimeter. And this was a week after my due date. No, three days after my due date. Three days after my due date. Yeah, three days. It was three days after my due date. And she was like, you know, your body must be doing a little something, but not much to start labor. So she was like, I'll just see you at your 41 week appointment. And at this time, guys, I was so like tired. My hips were hurting. Um, it was just a lot. This whole journey was just like completely a faith journey. Um, not to mention, um, the way he was positioned was not the correct position. He was um what they call rot i'll put the name at the bottom of the screen because i can't remember it's like he was not fully posterior meaning face in the back but he was kind of his face was kind of to my side so he wasn't completely anterior which in those type of pregnancies typically the babies you don't go into labor on your own because the baby is not positioned well enough to start pushing down on your uterus and so it won't initiate contraction so he wasn't in a position for me to even start labor and one of the side effects, as you know, with having like a posterior baby or a ROT baby is that um, your labors can be really long and really painful. You can have a lot of back labor. So going into this last week of pregnancy, I'm realizing, you know, I thought we, she felt them. She realized he flipped into the wrong position. Um, I'm not having any, any labor signs. So in my mind, guys, I was just like... I'm probably not gonna be able to have this home birth because I'm already high risk because I have had a c-section before and I don't know if my body will naturally go into labor on its own without any medical interventions needed so now we're three days into labor I, I mean three days past my delivery date um, she checks me again I'm still only one centimeter I'm st my uterus is still very high and posterior and he's still in the wrong position guys and at this point, I, you know, like I said, I was getting really discouraged. And um, this was really when, like, God had to, like, really grip me on his promises, right? So, I had already known at the initial, like, at the initial part of this pregnancy that I wanted a home birth. COVID had just really hit the United States when I found out I was pregnant. And I knew that um, the hospital setting just probably was not, Oh, not the safest in regards to COVID, but also just not a place that I, I would feel comfortable because I wouldn't, at the hospital that I was looking at, you would not be able to have anyone in the delivery room, even while you're laboring until it was like at the end point where the father could come and who knows, you know, if he would have made it there in time. So I knew at the very beginning, I wanted a home birth, um, but my body had never went into labor on its own with my last two kids. So it was like, is my body 
gonna function right for me to be able to have a home birth like i've always needed pitocin um i've always gotten an epidural um it's just been uh intervention after intervention after intervention and so i had never seen my body just participate like like get go into labor on its own and actually produce a baby on its own it's always had some medical intervention so that last week on that like that last week when it was like he's posterior i'm not dilating it just it just it just resurfaced all of those fears that i had oh you okay okay <laughs> it resurfaced all of those fears and it was just like god I really need your help to trust you that you can enable my body to birth this baby and not only birth this baby but birth it safely at home where I'm okay and he's okay and the environment is just filled with your presence and so it was really guys a pressing in like I had I contacted my friends I'm like y'all pray for me help me like to not get discouraged God and help me to like really lean and depend on you that I don't just give in and say forget it I'm gonna go ahead to the hospital so literally 41 weeks i had another appointment a uh, guy's same thing same thing literally one centimeter she barely could reach my um my uterus it was still high up and he was still in the wrong position so at this point i'm just like like even when she told me like i broke down crying um <laughs> during my appointment and that you know she was a christian she's a christian as well so she was just trying to encourage me she's like it's okay don't worry she's like i really believe that you're going to have this home birth and da, da 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 so i was like okay i was like well at this point do you think that i should i can start doing anything to kind of encourage my body to like get going to labor and so she just looking at my history and um where like where i was at in my pregnancy she was like okay you can safely try castor oil under my supervision and at this point guys like i had did castor oil with ami and it was just disgusting so even the thought of it was just like oh i cannot do castor oil again the thought of it just makes me want to puke if you have um seen my midwife's brew video you would know and i'll uh link that in the description box and up here but i did the midwife's brew with ami and i guys I threw it up because of the castor oil I couldn't even like digest it for her to initiate labor with her so when she brought up castor oil I was just like oh my god not this again like it's not gonna work blah 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 but at this point I was also desperate because I was in pain so she was like okay um no this was this is this was not 41 weeks this was 40 weeks and six days it was the day before I would turn 41 weeks so she was like you can go home um try two tablespoons with like an orange juice and then we'll and then let me know so i went home i contacted my doula which happens to be uh, one of my pastor's wives and i was like like i'm about to try this castor oil so i might go into labor soon so just to give you a heads up i tried it and I, my daughter's my appointment with her was at nine o'clock that morning she told me to do it like as soon as i got home in case i did go into labor so around 9 30 nothing 10 30 in the morning nothing 11 o'clock nothing 12 o'clock bam i'm starting to have these contractions and i'm like oh wow like they, they like came upon me like really hard and they were constantly coming they weren't really consistent but they were like one minute apart four minutes apart five minutes apart seven minutes apart back two minutes apart and so i was like having contractions and pun like back to back to back to back and so what i did is i went and got in bed i said okay god let me rest my mind because this is it like this is really it told my husband he went to pick pick up our daughters took a uh took them to my cousin's house and um it was like okay this is really this is really going down guys by the time my husband had got back so i had been having contractions for about five hours at that point by the time he got back they had started subsiding and i was like okay let me stand up and walk around because they say if you stand up and stuff you'll be able to tell if they're the real ones so i stood up and guys they just they stopped dead stopped and i was so discouraged i was like i went through all of that pain for nothing like uh-uh not uh-uh i was upset i was disappointed because i was so ready to meet him i had to contact my doula back and contact my midwife like guys i think it's a false alarm they're stopping so the next day now this is 41 weeks on the dot um i 
she told me, okay, you can try it one more time. But this time, try it with um, chocolate ice cream and like blend it into like a smoothie. And even then, I was just like a little skeptical because I'm just like, that don't even sound good with castor oil. But anyway, I did it again. So that on the 41 weeks, I took some, I, two tablespoons of castor oil and um, some chocolate ice cream. I blended it and... Um, I'm sorry guys let me back up so at 41 weeks and six days I did a castor oil but I forgot to mention at 41 weeks and three days she gave me some um it's called bark bark wood oil and that is something that helps to stimulate labor and start labor but obviously that didn't work either and I had to take that all day and it did not do nothing. It didn't stimulate labor or anything. And then I tried to cast the oil at 41 weeks and six days. And it didn't what well, sent me into false labor. And then at 41 weeks, and it like literally at 41 weeks, um, is when I took the castor oil with a chocolate shake. I took that around 10 o'clock. 12 o'clock comes around, guys. No contractions. All of a sudden. One o'clock in the afternoon, I start getting contractions. So again, I'm like, my mom is here. She's with the girl. She's cooking for them. And so I'm just walking around the house, walking around the house. I'm like, okay, let me just walk through and walk through and walk through them. Within 30 minutes of them starting, I go downstairs to my husband's office and I'm like, okay, babe, I'm having contractions. Let's go walk around the neighborhood. And it was like freezing cold, but I was like, let's go walk around the neighborhood to keep these things coming. So I wait for him and then I go, I wait for him at like 10 minutes. We go outside and guys, I did not make it a block before like these things started getting like super intense like and they were coming every maybe two minutes super into super intense and i remember i we didn't even get to the end of the block and i had a contraction because as you know contractions go up a hill it hits a peak and then it goes back down so i had a contraction it was at its peak it went down a little bit and then that sucker went straight back up. It didn't even go back down. And I looked at so I was like, oh my God, I cannot move. He was like, babe, we got to get back to the house. And so I'm just like, oh my God, what am I doing? Like, am I really about to do this? Because at that point, I was like, okay, these are real. I get upstairs. And remember, I'm leave when I left the house, it was only maybe like 15 minutes. And they were like intense, but they hadn't got all the way there. By the time I got back to the house, um, I, I was having contractions. And my mom looked at me and she was like, okay, yeah these are the real things because <laughs> they were like okay i gotta stop i gotta breathe i gotta like i i knew it was the real thing so i said call i, I call our doula i told my husband to call our doula doula and the midwife and let them know like these are real contractions this baby is coming so i go upstairs and i'm like okay just in case this is not real let me get in the shower because they say if um if if you get like warm water or like a bath and they're not real they'll stop so i go upstairs and um i get in the shower and i'm putting like warm water on and guys they're still coming still 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 coming and at this point which you'll see i'll be like putting pictures in while i'm talking but at this point i didn't have time to set up my camera my birthing room was already set up and i can put some pictures of that here my birthing room was already uh set up but the cameras were not set set up so at this point i just did not have the mental capacity to pull out a camera situate it and vlog this and i'm so disappointed that i wasn't able to but i am grateful for the pictures that i got so i get in the shower and i'm in there for like maybe an hour and a half by that time my doula is here and my midwife are here and they're here getting the pool ready the pool was already blown up but they're trying to fill the pool with water and i'm just in the shower um going through the contractions just going through them going through them and then my midwife this was my midwife got there within two hours of the contraction starting so if that was one so two three so around three o'clock she got there and she came in my room she was like can you get out the shower so i can just see where you're at i sit down she does she does my check and i'm six centimeters six centimeters so in two hours i progressed five centimeters because i had just went to her that morning and i was still one centimeter i had progressed five centimeters in two hours so she looked up and she because she had her um she had brought another midwife with her to assist her she looked up and she was like 
oh yeah, this the real deal. So then I look over, I'm like looking out the shower, and they like all scrambling. Everybody's trying to get the bed together and the room together. Cause again, guys, I just I'm used to labor like slowly picking up. This sucker just started and then just did not stop. So she came and she, she when she checked me, she was like, oh, you're six centimeters. And so they just started doing everything. And honestly, at that point when she told me I was six centimeters, that gave me an extra umph. Because I was like, six centimeters? Like, okay, this is real. Like, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. <laughs> Okay, so then, you know, after that, I'm doing the labor. My doula gets me out of the pool. We're doing all of our labor, uh, you know, positions with Sar and her. And I realized at that point, like, I just wanted to labor by myself. I didn't really want many people touching me. I was just, like, posted up on the wall. I just was, like, doing this deep maternal groan <laughs> in each uh, contraction. And so, like, literally within two more hours, I was fully dilated. Two more hours. So, guys... That is literally four hours and I was fully dilated. I had dilated nine centimeters within four hours. So in that fourth hour, she checks me and she's like, okay, it's time to go. But he's still high up. So I'm like, oh, cause like you, you ladies know when you hear 10 centimeters, it's like, oh, it's the end. I can push this, these intense contractions can stop. And little did I know, I still had an hour to go. So she t she checked me. She said, you're fully dilated, fully a face. I feel his head, but he's still high. So we're going to have to work him down. So she literally had me on the birthing stool. She had me on the toilet, the squatting positions. We went through multiple like rounds of positions to kind of get him down. The pool. Let's get to the pool. So I'm having a water birth, right? So the pool is not it's not like humongous and so um I'm, during this whole process my husband is getting the pool filled and so um little did I know when I got into the shower for that hour and a half I had used all the hot water y'all I had used all the hot water and I had also washed clothes that morning I don't know I just really did not know they really didn't think that he was coming but he was and I used all the hot water so what was happening through those two hours where I'm thinking like where why is the freaking pool not full he's like going to different places getting like water heaters my best friend is going to different places trying to get like kettles to like fill the pot up pots up and it was just a hot mess it was just a hot mess because I used up all the hot water but by the time it was by the time it was time to push this was like literally I got in the water probably 20 minutes 25 minutes before he came so i was not in the water that much and to be honest if i'm really honest it didn't pro provide at that point i was at the end so it didn't really provide much relief but i still got in the pool and she was like okay i need for you to lift your right leg up and squat she said whatever position feels best to you but it's to get him down and out lift your right leg up so if you remember, he had never switched to the anterior pos position. So his head was still kind of facing my left side. So when I got when I got in the pool and I got in a crouching position with my left leg up, it helped push him kind of like instead because where babies are coming straight down, he was coming at an angle. So I was having to put my leg up so I can angle him down and go down uh, the birth canal. So that worked. So I pushed for about 20 minutes. And what I mean by push is like push like using my body and gravity to push him down my birth canal and then out of my hoo-ha. <laughs> so uh that took about 25 minutes and i remember guys when his head came out like i felt the ring of fire i felt all of that and i remember feeling it i was like okay this is real like this is real like he's coming like this is what, what all I, these women are talking about the ring of fire and i remember and there was a moment of fear like shoot but then immediately that followed that it was i'm almost done keep going and i remember looking at the scriptures you'll be able to see in my pictures i had scriptures and at words of affirmations um right by my pool and i remember looking at one and i hear my doula and the other end of me like tiara you're almost there she's like reading off these affirmations and i'm like oh, okay all right because in my I'm, I'm even verbalizing to them like i cannot do this like what like i don't know how long this is gonna take i like da -da -da. and she's like no you can do remember you're just 
you work with Sarge, work with him to get him here, work with God. Like God is God has made your body to do exactly what it's doing. The pain is does not mean fear. He's coming, he's coming. And so I push, I push, I push, and then bloop, his head is out. After his head is out, I sit down and she's like, You gotta wait. Cause I'm like, at this point I kind of panic. I'm like, get him out, get him out, because he's underwater. And she's like, my midwife was like, no, Tier, your next contraction, you're gonna pull push him out. And so I pushed him out, and then Sarge Malachi Levy was here. And guys, I felt like a super woman. Like I had this baby at home, no medications, um, no epidural, like no other interventions. Like I had this baby and I had him at home and it was safe. I was able to just to get up, get in my bed, um, and just, yeah, just be home. My children were there. My mom was there. My best friend was there. It just felt so different just being in the own, in your own bed in the comfort of your own space and he latched on immediately um i did have a what's called a retained placenta so after i had him my placenta i couldn't deliver my placenta so i did have to be transferred to the hospital where we just drove to the hospital for them to take out my placenta about an hour and a half after i had him um but Guys, that didn't diminish, for me, that just did not diminish the whole process of delivery. I still felt like everything was achieved and no disappointment. I was just so grateful that everything, everyone was safe. I was safe, he was safe, he was healthy. He had a bit of jaundice, but outside of that, it was just amazing. And so for those of you who are considering a home birth, I just say, pray about it continuously pray about it keep it before the lord and if he gives you that unction to do it girl go for it like she always told me you know it really takes trust because of course things can go left of course we know that we can know that, that happens in the hospital but when i looked at the statistics of like the mater maternal death rate in the hospital for african-american women it was higher so it was just like God, I really would love this experience because we plan on this being our last biological child. Uh, I would really love this experience. Um, just sorry, guys, my camera had died, but yeah, so it was an amazing experience. And if God is leading you in that direction, I say go for it, right? Go for it. Um, and just be prayerful about it continuously. And uh, it was, yeah, it was just an amazing, it was an amazing experience. And I hope that, you know, this was a blessing to you or that you enjoyed this story if you're considering it. Um, and if you like these type of videos, please let me know in the comment um, box. I still, if you want more information about retained placenta and all of that, just let me know. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. And would you please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure to hit that little bell so you'll get all the notifications when I upload a new video. But until next Wednesday, I will see you guys later. Love you and bye-bye.